Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to my channel. It has been quite a long time since I have filmed or posted a video and I apologize for my absence, especially to those who are just subscribing to my channel on a weekly basis. I've had new subscribers like every single week and it hurts my heart because I wish that I had the motivation to film a video. Um, and it's not just motivation, but it's just, uh, I don't know, to just get out of my own head to be able to um, realize that this channel can be used as an avenue to help people who are battling with endometriosis or potentially think that they have endometriosis. Um, but the reason for my absence has been, um, I think it's like a justifiable reason, but um, for 27 months now, so even while I started my channel, I have been battling infertility. Uh, so me and my uh, fiance, I'm not wearing my ring in this video, so I'm gonna quickly go grab it. Me and my now fiance <laughs> um, have been trying since just after my um, surgery with endometriosis because my doctor had given me the option of, you know, one, going on Lupron, which is a menopause inducing drug, or uh, two was to start to conceive or really three would be like excuse me uh going on birth control to just put a halt to my period not put me in menopause but put a halt to my period to give my body time to heal but the desire of having a baby was just growing so strong for me and my fiance so um we just decided to go ahead with that and we were so just like oblivious to um, how challenging it can be to conceive uh, because growing up I'm sure like many of you can relate is that you are told basically like if you have sex you're gonna get pregnant and it's such a huge misconception um, especially now with how many women struggle with infertility we should be taught about safe sex for sure but not the fact that when you have sex, you're, it's going to lead to a baby because for many of us, that is not the reality. So we started trying to conceive slowly in like July 2017, but more officially and more aggressively August 2017. And now as I'm filming this video, August, or sorry, October 2019, we have yet to have a successful pregnancy. Um, the furthest along I've ever been is six weeks, and that was in January 2018. Um, my numbers weren't doubling for my HCG blood work, um, but they were slowly going up, like almost doubling, right? Um, I did catch it early because we were tracking, like I was using ovulation predictor kits to try to conceive, um, which is just like a pee stick. I got mine from Amazon because I pee on like a million a day. So it made sense to go for the cheaper option. I kind of feel lost <laughs> for words right now because this has been a video I've been wanting to film for so long. And so to like actually find my words is quite challenging. Uh, first of all, I don't want to be judged, you know, for um, not being married and trying to conceive because specifically like on my Facebook, I have a lot of family and friends who are Christian and I am my, a Christian myself, but, um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with trying to conceive right now because coming out of surgery, those were my options. And it's not that I don't believe that God can do things for me, but I am also like a really like realistic person. So by posting this video, I literally do not care about what your opinion is on the timing of me conceiving. If anyone chooses to comment of anything negative, I will surely delete it because this is just to be used as an education platform on um, that if you have endometriosis or if you suspect that you have endometriosis, you will more than likely struggle with trying to conceive. And it is very much an up and down um, battle that you face daily. Um, okay, I did not think I was gonna get emotional, but um, I have, like been officially pregnant as in with blood work and the doctor saw it uh, once but I have had 
Besides that time, I've had five other times where I've had positive home pregnancy tests on multiple different brands. So, um, you know, Dollar Store, Dollar Tree tests, Clear Blue, and First Response, and even the Walmart Equate brand, um, all in those same cycles. So I've had like total of six cycles where I've tested positive for a pregnancy. And then it's like within a week, I lose that pregnancy. And it's obviously the most excruciating period ever. So like I know my body can get pregnant, but it's about staying pregnant. So I don't even have the thing in my head where a lot of people say it's like, at least you can get pregnant because that doesn't make someone who's struggling with infertility feel any better. Um, I would rather not be able to even get pregnant at all than get pregnant and lose a pregnancy because that is extremely difficult where we're both looking and we're trying to like evaluate the test like does it have a line i see a faint line is it a shadow and i get eric to look at it and we're both like concentrating on it and then i pee like each month i probably pee on like i don't know 20 ovulation sticks because i don't want to miss my ovulation and then pregnancy tests i probably be on 20 as well because I desperately want it and I want to catch it as early as possible so I can go in for that blood work and then watch it double um, because every 48 hours your HCG number should double. Like saying all that, I have such a, a strong desire to be a mom. I really just think that that's one of the things that I was made to do and I've been struggling to talk about it out of like what I said before being judged and then um, the second thing is like talking about it I feel like it's jinxing it which may sound really weird but I feel like if I talk about it then it may not happen or I was watching this like thing on uh, Facebook today of someone posted about like Jim Carrey like doing this motivational thing and he was like talking about asking the universe for what you want or God or whoever you believe in right and I pray for other people so much like if I see that someone's going through a hard time or like I know someone's going through a hard time or whatever it is like I'll pray for people but I almost feel like I'm not allowed to ask for a baby even though that's like the strongest desire of my heart where I'm at in my life right now um, but not even just that like I do believe that one day we will have a baby but I also believe in the practicality of making all the smart medical choices in order to have a baby so you know being on supplements and all that kind of thing but this is um a, like the hardest the hardest journey month after month after month um just going on vacation will not make me pregnant not thinking about it will not make me pregnant um, getting drunk, as some people have said, will not make me pregnant. I have a real condition that results in infertility. And I had a diagnosis months ago of PCOS, which also results in infertility. So after, you know, months of trying, we did one unmedicated IUI. It had to be unmedicated because I had like a really high level of estrogen. I think normal for day three of your cycle is like, I feel like it's under 20, but I'm probably wrong with that. But mine was like over 300 because I had a hemorrhagic cyst on my ovary, which was, is a blood filled cyst. So it was excreting hormones, the hormone being estrogen. So I couldn't continue with a medicated cycle. Um, so we've done one assisted fertility method in terms of like the IUI but I have done nine cycles of letrozole. Letrozole is similar to that of Clomid, um, but letrozole is the most widely used thing. Um, letrozole was first used with women with breast cancer and then they figured out that they were ovulating well in this drug, so now it's used as a fertility drug. Um, and it's covered by our insurance because it's not like listed as just a fertility medication because fertility drugs aren't covered by our insurance. So, since it's listed as a breast cancer drug, then I can get it covered. So we pay like six bucks a month for it. So I've done five, sorry, I have done nine cycles of letrozole, three consecutive months of 2.5 milligrams. Then I took a, like a month break, did three cycles of five milligrams, and then took a break and then did three cycles of 7.5 milligrams, which is popping three pills or two pills for the five and then one for the 2.5, because they only come in 2.5 milligram. Uh, pill form. 
um, with all of those. Um, from what I know from like the five and the seven milligram, I did ovulate, although I didn't conceive successfully. Um, I did have months where I did fall pregnant just with like a home pregnancy test that I took, but I went on to miscarry shortly after. So our next step is to do a medicated monitored IUI, which would be again doing letrozole, but on my best cycle, which is the five milligram, getting monitored with blood work and ultrasound so that I can actually see when I'm about to ovulate and then um, go in and do the IUI. So um, I'm really hopeful. Um, I of course feel emotional still like all the time because I want to be a mom and I just hope that it happens because I feel like I can't take anymore. But like people say, um, God only gives you uh, what you can handle. And I honestly feel like that maybe God did give us this uh, journey to be on because he knew that we could handle it, even though some months and some days it feels like we just can't. Um, especially because now, like after being in it for so long, I know it's affecting Eric because he desperately wants to be a father and wants to have a baby. So um, this is, it's been challenging for our relationship, but like in a good way, it's actually brought us closer together. Um, we don't argue about, you know, the miscarriages. We don't argue about uh, what the next steps are to take. We don't argue about the money because we, are, we have saved money for all of this stuff. So we're choosing to be smart in it and not rush it but to rush it, if that makes sense, because we need to get going with it. Um, yeah, so I just thought I would share a little bit as to why I have not been here. And my plan is to start doing more videos. Now that I've been vocal about my infertility, now my videos that I actually have ideas for and wanted to share, if I'm having a bad day and it has to do with fertility, I know now I can share it because, you know, it's out there where I've been trying to conceive for 27 months. We have yet to have a successful pregnancy. And I just want to share everything to do with it, even though it's so hard and so scary to hit that record button and put it on the internet for people to see and maybe to be judged, right? But I said when I first started my YouTube channel for endometriosis that if I can help even one person with their journey with endometriosis and now with the aspect of adding infertility to it, even if it's someone who is not even in a relationship, not even looking at having kids yet, I want to be that information source for that person um, that is beyond their doctor and it comes from actually experiencing it myself. Experiencing it myself. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate those who have tuned in to watch this update. As I've said in every video, I'm sorry if I was all over the place and none of it seemed to make sense. Um, I'm just, I'm struggling real hard right now. And um, I sometimes have days where I feel like I may never be a mom. And that is like so hard. So um, I just like, I, I hope it happens. So if you're someone who prays or if you're someone who just sends positive vibes out into the world, please give us in your thoughts and prayers. Um, I also know that we're only two years in and it's not like we've done IVF yet, but it's still hard. So please be gracious with me and don't judge. <laughs> okay, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you very soon in my next video.